Amen. If you open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 20, to Matthew chapter 20, as the kids learn about the different parables of Jesus, many of Jesus' parables, you may be familiar with that, begin with the sentence, the kingdom of heaven is like, and then he begins talking about the parable. And he's mentioning or, or comparing that his kingdom is like this story, this illustration that he is going to talk about. You see, we, we are so accustomed to this kingdom, to the United States, to the government of, that we live in, or, or, or whatever country you may be from, even if it's not the United States, whatever part of the world that you may have lived in, we are accustomed to the kingdom of this world and how it runs and how it functions, and we sometimes make the mistake that that's how God's kingdom must be like. And God wants to change our mind that his kingdom is not how this kingdom is. Jesus was not the Messiah that was expected. They were expecting a different Messiah. His kingdom was not the kingdom that the disciples expected. They expected a different kind of kingdom to, to, to conquer the Romans. But that's, that wasn't the kingdom that Jesus brought and that he was talking about. So here in Matthew chapter 20, one of the parables that the children went over and learned was a parable of the workers in the vineyard. Matthew chapter 20, verse 1. It says, For the kingdom of heaven is like, there it is, a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. Now when he had agreed with the laborers for a, denar a, a denarius a day, he sent them into the vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and whatever is right, don't lose that word, whatever is right, will be given to you. So they went. And again, he went on about the sixth and the ninth and did the same thing. And about the eleventh hour, ready to shut down, ready to close, ready to finish the day. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing idle and said to them, Why have you been standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one hires us. You also go into my vineyard. And whatever is what? Right. right you will receive. Whatever is, is right, you will receive. So here, Jesus says, this is how the kingdom of heaven is like. A man has a big vineyard and he hires workers and he hires from the beginning, right? From 6 a.m. and continues hiring from 6 to 9 to 12 to 3 and even to 5, ready to closing time. Ready for closing time. So you have workers that have worked 12 hours, you have workers that have worked nine hours, six, and even one that worked just one hour barely. And so then the parable continues there in verse 8. After, after they've, they've worked, it's time now to get paid. And we may be familiar with this parable, but, but there's a lesson that we need to learn that we need to change our mind of how God's kingdom is and not how it is here. In verse 8 says, So when evening had come, the owner of the vineyard said to the steward, Call the laborers and give them their wages, beginning with the last to the first. And when those came who were hired about the eleventh hour, so how much did, did they work? All day? No, right? Just, just a little bit. Maybe they, they didn't even get a chance to break a sweat. They were barely getting warmed up and... Time to go home. And when they, and when those, verse 9, came who were hired about the 11th hour, they each received a denarius. Okay, they each received a day's wage, just how the early ones did. And look at verse 9. And when those who came who were hired about the 11th hour they received, I'm sorry, we, we read that. But when the first came, they supposed that they would receive more, and they likewise received each a denarius. Can you imagine what if you were the person 
who, were, who, who worked all day. Picture yourself in line, and who was, who was the owner paying first? The ones who worked the least, right? And so you're in the back of the line, or maybe even in the middle of the line, and you're tired, and you're seeing them gain their wages, what would your mind be thinking when you see that they get a whole day's salary? I'm going to get more, or what's going on, right? Why is he getting paid more? And so, and so there, in, in verse 10 and verse 12, verses 10 to 12, you, you see their complaint. You see their complaint, but when they came, they expected to get more, and when they had received it, they complained against the landowner. And what were they saying? These last men have worked only one hour, and you made them what? Equal. Equal. What is this parable about? It's about the kingdom of who? God. It's about God's kingdom. Keep that in mind. This is how, this is how God rules his kingdom. This is how God is. You made them equal to us who have borne the burden and the heat of the day. Do you resonate with that, with that worker? Can you, can you relate to that worker? You worked your tail off all day, whether inside in the office or outside in the field or in the attic or driving all day, whatever profession it is that you do. You work all day. You're tired physically, maybe even mentally. And then somebody who just worked in just a little bit gets the same salary that you did. Would you be a little bit bothered by that? Or would you just be, good for you? <laughs> I would be bothered. Why, why would we be bothered? That's how we're raised, isn't it? That, that's the kingdom of this world. You get what you put into it. You get what you put into it. In this world, that's how it works. But Jesus is saying, in my kingdom, it's not like that at, at all. That's not my kingdom. My kingdom doesn't work like that. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is not like this world. It's not like the United States or any other kingdom in this world. In the kingdom of heaven, people don't get what they deserve. They get the, what God graciously gives. Amen. You know, sometimes we say, I'm so glad that God looks at the inside and not the outside. God looks at the heart, right? And, and we sometimes use that as an excuse. Well, God looks at the heart. That's actually worse. Did you know that? <laughs> because outside, I think I do pretty good. I can buy a nice suit, you know, shave my three little hairs that grow, comb my hair, brush my teeth, and I think I look presentable. I wish God would look from the outside, but he doesn't. It's even worse. He looks at the inside. He knows how, how I am inside in my heart. And even like that, he does not give me what I deserve. Amen. Amen. He doesn't give you what you deserve. Amen. He gives us graciously, graciously. God treats everyone generously. The kingdom of heaven is not a place where you get <clears throat> what you deserve or you get something because you are so good. No. But, you, but God gives generously to everyone His grace. His grace. So, so don't miss in this parable there. When He sent out the ones that were working, He says, don't worry, you'll get paid what is right. You'll get paid what is right. Does this remind you of another parable where somebody got upset because somebody received grace? We just, we just studied it a couple of weeks ago, right? The prodigal son. 
So, so just, just go with me there to Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. There, and, and we're familiar with this story. We, 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 we went over it a couple of weeks ago. And here, Luke 15. And again, this parable is similar to the one that we just looked at. Luke 15, verse 1, it says, Then all, no, I'm sorry, verse 11. Then he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of the goods that falls to me. So he divided them his livelihood, and not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a, country, to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. And so the rest of, you know, the verses explain on, on how this son went and spent all the money and ended up broke, ended up poor, ended up with no food, ended up with a job feeding pigs. And his mind comes to realize even my dad's workers eat better than I do. And I'm here trying to to, to get some leftovers here. Notice verse 17, Luke 15, verse 17. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's higher servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. Was he right to, to say that? Yes, he has sinned. And verse 19, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Was he right to say that? Yeah. Make me like one of your hired servants. So as this son is coming back to his father, he's going to let his father know, I blew it and I'm so sorry. I don't deserve anything. But if I can become a worker, why is he thinking that? Because at least I can, get, I can get food, at least a shelter. If I can become a worker and work my way maybe back into the home, then that would be much, much better. Now notice verse 20. So he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Now remember, in this story, the son was dirty, smelling like swine, maybe hadn't taken a bath, maybe hadn't brushed his teeth, and his fathers ran to him, hugged him, embraced him, and close enough to even kiss him. That's how much God loves you and me. That's how much God desires for us to be with him. Verse 21, and the son said to him, and here it is, Father, I sin against heaven and in, and in your sight and am no longer worthy to be called your son. What was the other part that the, that the son was going to say? Make me like one of your servants, right? But the verse stops with the word but. <laughs> but the father said to his servant, bring out the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. What didn't the son get to say? Made me like a servant. He didn't get to say it. Why not? Because Jesus is making the point. In my kingdom, you don't earn your way back into the home. You don't earn your way to the kingdom of heaven. You get it because I am gracious to you. Yes, we are sinners. Yes, Lord, I've sinned against heaven and before you, and I'm not worthy to be called your son. None of us here are worthy to be called sons and daughters of God. But by God's grace, because he loves us, we are called sons and daughters of God. By God's grace, he says, put on the robe, a ring on your finger, and sandals, and cover him. And God's righteousness brings, God gives us his righteousness. Just like this prodigal 
son. He thought like the, 11, like, like the man at the back of the line. I've earned my pay. And this prodigal son, I need to earn my way back home. I need to earn the favor of my father. And these workers in the Matthew, Matthew 20 parable, the ones who were there all day, what were they thinking? I've earned, my, I've earned his favor. I've earned my salary. These one-hour workers haven't earned it. And they got upset. Then Jesus is letting us know that's not how my kingdom is. That's, may, that it, that's how it is here. Right? When you go to work, if you clock in for one hour, don't expect eight-hour pay. If you, if you submit an application and you have no education to back you up, degree that is required for that application, don't expect the job. But in God's kingdom, God is letting us know, my kingdom is not like that. And if you notice, even the older brother is thinking the same way because he was angry, if you remember. When they had the party, the feast, and the, he would not go inside, the father goes outside and says, why are you out here? There in Luke 15, verse 20. And he arose and came to his father, but when he was still... No, I'm sorry. Verse 28. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore his father came out and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years I have been serving you. And I never transgressed your commandments at any time. What is he saying? I deserve. All right? I deserve. He even says here, and you never even let me have a young goat that I may make merry with my friends. I deserve even a young goat. I deserve something. I've been faithful to you. You see the mentality? I've earned a party. Not this son of yours doesn't deserve, doesn't earn it. The older brother and the younger brother think the same way, that they need to earn their father's favor, their father's love. This, these workers at the back of the line thought, we've earned it. And God is saying, that's not how my kingdom works. I need you to start changing your mind and thinking that. In Luke 15, 32, as, as we saw here, oh, the father says, the father, after he talks to him, he says, it was right that we should make merry. Right? It was right that we should make merry. Didn't he say that also to the workers? Go and work and I will pay you what is right. What is right for God may be not right for us. What is right for God we may not understand. We may think something is not fair, but you see, we have a worldly point of view. I'm not talking about worldly as far as that we enjoy uh, um, sinful pleasures. No, no, no. A, a worldly mentality that I get whatever I put into it. The kingdom of heaven is not based on how good you and I are or how long we've been members of the church or how many generations my, ha my family is of Adventism. God's kingdom is not based on that at all. It's based on God's grace to you and to me. God wants to change our minds when it comes to his kingdom, when it comes to his church. Because if God's kingdom is like that, shouldn't his church represent, mirror the kingdom of God? So when somebody comes through our doors, do they need to earn to come in here? I hope not. That was a weak... No, no, no. Anyone should come in here. Amen. Anyone should be welcome here. Amen. No matter how they look, how they smell, how they dress, every person should be able to come into God's church, Amen. God's house. 
into God's house. It doesn't matter whether they've backslidden or not, or a pastor or sons or not. The kingdom of heaven is like a place where the king treats everyone not how they deserve to be treated, but with grace. And if you remember, the workers said, you made them equal with us. That's right. Before God, we are all what? Equal. There is no such thing as, well, this person has, has served in the ministry 50 years. Let me, no, no, no. Everybody is equal. Praise the name of Jesus. Do you think that that one-hour worker who got the whole day's salary was grateful for the grace and love there? You know, <clears throat> this is how God's kingdom is. This is how God's kingdom is. And if you or I have an issue with that and think, well... That's not right. You need to ask God to change your mind. You need to ask God to change your mind. Because in heaven, if we get to heaven with that, no, we won't get to heaven with that attitude. But in heaven, there, there won't be a hierarchy. Well, over here are the pastor's houses. And over here are... Um, Fill in the blank. Okay. Here are, are the lay people houses over here. The conference officials, we have them on a we'll high one over there. No. Everyone gets a mansion. Whether you, the thief on the cross gets the same mansion that John the apostle is going to get. Everybody is equal. And we should look at everyone equal in the same way as God does. The kingdom of heaven, that's how the kingdom of heaven is like. If you go to, to, to Matthew chapter 19, Matthew chapter 19, right before this parable that Jesus shared, <clears throat> this mentality was, and I believe still is, stuck in many of people's minds. There are denominations that are based that what you do earns your way to heaven. In, in Matthew chapter 19, the story of the rich young ruler, what did the rich young ruler question? There in Matthew 19, verse 16. Now behold, one came and said to him, good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may what? What do I got to do? What I got to do? What was he thinking? I got to what? Do something. All right? And then we know, we know the rest of the story there. But then after the story, the disciples are kind of puzzled because the rich and ruler left sad. And then in verse 25, the disciples said, well, then who can be saved? Verse 26, but Jesus looked at him and said to him, with men this is impossible, with, but with God all things are possible. Then verse 27, notice verse 27, even Peter, even people in the church think the same way. I need to earn, I need to do something. Then Peter said and said to him, see, we have left all and followed you, therefore what shall we have? Peter's thinking the same way. I've given, I've given everything. What's in it for me? What do I get? And then Jesus then, right after that, shares the parable of the workers in the vineyard. That it's not, that salvation is not based on what you do or how long you've been a Christian. It's based on the merits and grace of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. It's based on the merits and grace of Jesus. Romans 15, verse 7 says, Receive one another just as Christ also received us to the glory of God. So at my last text, I invite you to look in James chapter 2. James chapter 2.
James chapter 2. Verse 1 says, My brethren, do not hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with partiality. For if there should come into the, your assembly a man with gold rings and fine apparel, and there should also come in a poor man in filthy clothes, and you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes, and say to him, You sit here in a good place and say to the poor man you go stand over there or sit here at my footstool you have not shown partiality among yourselves no have you not shown partiality among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts verse 8 if you really fulfill the royal law According to scripture, which is what? You shall love your neighbor as yourself. You do well. You do well. This is the type of Christian that I want to be, that does not show partiality. Because in heaven there won't be any partiality. Every single one of us are saved by the grace of God, not of how long I've clocked in, to the church office, not how about how long I've been in the ministry, how long I've been a Christian. Those that come in even at the 11th hour, at the last minute before the probation is closed, will have the kingdom of heaven as much as, as, much as Adam and Eve are, as much as the apostles are. The pillars of the church. Do you feel entitled? Maybe it's best that we don't answer, right? Because sometimes we do. Sometimes we may feel entitled. Don't you know who I am? The worst thing that I've seen are church leaders with a power trip. You know, I'm, maybe I shouldn't have said that. You know what a power trip is, right? When they're entitled, they feel entitled. Don't you know who I am? Why are you going to charge me? Don't you know where I work? Do we feel entitled here? Jesus is saying, I can imagine those church leaders in the back of the line and seeing a fellow young person there who worked one hour, and they're like, excuse me? I better get more. And come then to get paid. Don't you know who I am? Don't you know my office is there on Alvarado or in Burleson or in Washington? Don't you know who I am? It does not matter, friends. If this is in your mind, you need to ask God to remove it because that's not how God's kingdom is like. That is not how God's kingdom is like. And I apologize if anybody here has experienced a church leader who feels entitled. We are all sons and daughters of God, equal. Equal. All needing the same grace and mercy of God. And I want to be that type of Christian that looks at others how Christ looks at them. How about you? Amen? Amen. Let's close with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you very much because you're clear in your word that you love us all the same. You treat us all the same. You care for us all the same. And Lord, forgive us whenever we have displayed an attitude that we deserve more, are entitled more. Lord, forgive me if I have ever done that. And Lord, help us, as you have said, to have your mind. You ask us to have the mind of Christ. And so, Lord, we need your spirit to have that mind, to know that your kingdom is not how we are accustomed in this kingdom. 
that your love people is different how, than how we are accustomed we should love people. And so, Lord, I ask that you continue to bless your church, continue to bless your people, and those that are learning about you, that we may be gracious to them just how you have been gracious to us. Because we are all equal at the foot of the cross. Thank you, Father, for hearing our prayer. Bless your church. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I invite you to open your hymn books as we sing our closing.